and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about function notation in the specific context of linear functions. So as a reminder, linear functions can be written as f of x equals mx plus b. And if we let y equal f of x, we often write this as y equals mx plus b. So this is sort of our starting point for our function notation, is this particular way of writing the function. Now we just want to practice with this in some examples. So first, let's say that we have f of x is equal to 3x plus 1, and I want us to evaluate the following. Let's find f of 0, f of negative 1, and f of 5. So this process works the same for each of these. We're taking our function and we're giving it an input and we want to find the corresponding output. So our inputs here are 0, negative 1, and 5, and we need to figure out what output goes with them. So of course you could use some sort of graphing utility to graph this line and then evaluate this information, but I want to show you how to do it with just the formula. So what we're going to do is take our input value and substitute it in for x. So starting with f of 0, what I'm going to do is substitute in 0 for x. So instead of 3x plus 1, I'm going to do 3 times 0 plus 1. So I'm taking that 0, that becomes my input for x, and then I'm simplifying. So I do 3 times 0 plus 1, that's just 0 plus 1, so this means that f of 0 is equal to 1. Okay, let's repeat this for two more. So f of negative one, here negative one gets substituted in for x. So we have three times negative one plus one. Then this is just negative three plus one, which is negative two. And so now we have that f of negative one equals negative two. All right, now we're on to our last one. We have f of five. So again, we replace x with five because five is our input. So we're doing 3 times 5 plus 1, that is 15 plus 1, which is 16. So this tells us that f of 5 is equal to 16. So when we just have f of some value, the process is just to substitute in whatever that value is for x and simplify. This is true for any function notation, and we're just practicing this first with lines. Okay, let's take this one step further. So now I'm going to ask us, using this same function, for what values of x is f of x equal to 0 and f of x equal to 10? So when we have f of x equal to 0 or f of x equal to 10, this is asking what input gives 0 or 10 as an output. So what we want to do is take our function and set it equal to the value. So for us, that's 3x plus 1, and we want to set it equal to what we're looking for. So 3x plus 1 equals 0, or 3x plus 1 equals 10. And what we're doing is solving for x. So we have this new equation, and we want to solve for x in that equation. So the function notation goes away, and we just focus on that new equation we set up. So starting with 3x plus 1 equals 0, my goal is to isolate the x so that I just know what value makes the statement true for x. So what I'll do first is subtract 1 over to the right-hand side because I'm trying to isolate that x. So when I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm getting 3x is equal to negative 1. Then to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And by dividing by 3, we're undoing that multiplication, and so I'm just left with x. So I have x is equal to negative 1 over 3, or negative 1 third. So this tells us that f of negative 1 third, meaning negative 1 third is our input, produces the output 0. And you can always check your answer and plug it back into the very beginning. So if you take x and replace it with negative 1 third, you should get out 0. Okay, let's repeat this for the second equation. So here we have 3x plus 1 equals 10. Again, I'm solving for x. I want to isolate x. I'll subtract 1 over to the right-hand side first. So I'm subtracting 1 from both sides. That's now 3x equals 9. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to isolate the x, which then simplifies to x is equal to 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and so I'm getting 3 as my solution. So this tells us that f of 3 is equal to 10, and you should be able to plug 3 back into our original function and make sure that you're getting 10 as the output. 
All right, and there we go. So for this example, we found five different values using function notation. I wanna write them all here. So our function was three X plus one, and here are the values we found. And let's just graph them all to make sure everything looks good and to see how the line works. So I have f of zero equals one, that's the point zero one. I have f of negative one equals negative two, that's the point negative one, negative two. Then I have f of five equals 16, that's the point five, 16. Then I have negative one third zero and three ten. So those are my points that I found in all of those questions. And we can see our line between all of those points looks good. They're all on the line. All right, so this example had us using the function with the function notation and the equation written out. Now I just wanna do one more example, this time with the graph. So let's evaluate the following with the graph here. Let's say this function is g, and I want us to find g of two, g of zero, and then solve g of x equals three, and g of x equals zero. So starting with g of two, I'm looking at two on the x, and I wanna find the corresponding output. So two as an input corresponds to one as an output, and so one is my answer. All right, now I have zero as my input. I'm noticing that negative three is the corresponding output. Okay, now we need to solve g of x is equal to three. So I'm looking at three as an output and I wanna see which input corresponds to it. Three as an output corresponds to three as an input. So there's a point at three, three. So x equals three would be my answer. Then for g of x equals zero, I'm looking for the outputs of zero. This looks like here it's happening between one and two. Just to make it easy, I'm going to say that this is the input x equals 1.5 or three over two. Okay, I just wanna make this connection to the intercepts one more time before we finish. So you'll see that g of zero equals negative three. This is our vertical intercept. So it had an input of zero and an output of a negative three, and the negative three was the vertical intercept. So the input of zero is what helps us find that vertical intercept. And then for the horizontal intercept, this is when the output is zero. And this was at x equals 1.5 as the input had zero as an output. So we'll see this again, but Input of zero is vertical intercept, output of zero is horizontal intercept. And we can see that here in this example. All right, so in this video, we went through some examples of how to do function notation, specifically with linear functions. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.